Down here, I just prized out this piece of pottery, and actually, it's really pretty. It's got a lovely design on it. We'll go and wash it off, but I think it's a man with a horse. Investigation is required. It looks like he's feeding something. Maybe not a horse. Now I can see what looks like a blade down here poking out of the mud. The question is, is there going to be a handle on the end? Now there's the blade, the unmistakable shape of a knife blade. Now what have we got under here? You know, we might be, we might be lucky. Oh yes, we are lucky. Look at that. That is in remarkably good condition. It's either got a bone, it's probably bone, I think. Yeah, it's not wood. But look at that, an entire knife. I'm not sure on the age, but I know a man who will know. I'll be consulting Graham who has donated lots and lots of his found knives to the Cutler's Hall. Wow, great find. Let's give it a little wash. Oh, this is lovely. I've got a beautiful knife at home with some initials in it. It doesn't look like this one's got initials, but it's in remarkably good condition look at that that's beautiful lovely if we're lucky there might be a maker on there now look at these 
I'm not going to take them, but it's interesting, isn't it? These must have been thrown in as some kind of ritual, I suspect. Candles tied together with some uh, sort of uh, reed type things. But what ritual? I don't know. There are so many votive offerings thrown into the river by so many different religions. So finding things like that isn't at all surprising. Look now, here's a heartbreaking bottle. A lovely flask with a cork in it, but completely broken. What a shame. But was there a name on the other side, maybe? Should we take a look and see anyway? Let's have a look, turn it over. Oh, no, no there isn't. <laughs> so at least there's that consolation, but... Would have been nice to find that hole, wouldn't it? Right, well, I'm here with my friend Kathy, and honestly, I am kind of green with envy because she has just pulled out of the mud this absolutely stunning pot hut. <laughs> Look at that, don't mm. drop it, please no, don't drop no. it. How, how did you feel when you, when you found that? And what did oh, you see the, first of all? It was just the little ducks poking out the mud, and I thought, oh, that must be a bit of plate or something. And oh. I nearly left it. I just thought it was a bit of pottery. And, and who is on there? So it's James B. B. Palmer. What's that? Eight and nine, nine. Lower Thames Street and 173. Three, yes. Old Kent Road. That is absolutely stunning. I guess it was for, for jam or well, I'm not sure what Possibly. I've been, been in it, but that's absolutely beautiful. That's the absolutely. I mean oh, the adrenaline, gorgeous. how exciting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. brilliant. I'm so pleased. You must be so pleased. Oh, absolutely, yes. Well oh. done, Cathy. Well done, Cathy. That's, that's really you. stunning. So I always check little bits of plain pottery sticking out of the mud. That is the moral of the story. Story. I'll be doing that in the future. <laughs> Thanks very much for sharing that find with us. You're welcome. Right, come along and see what I've just spotted down here, which could be absolutely nothing. Can you see what I'm looking at down there? I'm actually looking at this because it just looks, doesn't it, a little bit like the edge of a ring, which would be absolutely fabulous if it was, but it could equally be part of a light bulb or something. So. I'm going to take you along with me for the discovery. What do you think? Da, da, da. It's definitely not a ring. Oh, look. It is part of a light bulb. Darn. Right, I want to have a look at this piece of wood down here. This bit. Just uh, piqued my curiosity. I'll turn the camera off while I'm extracting it and I'll come back and uh, show you if it's anything interesting. Okay, so as it happens, it does look quite interesting. It looks like it might have something to do with a sheave, some kind of pulley system. You can see that rounded edge there, which I think might be a sheave. Maybe there's one on the other side as well, there, you see. So, um, yeah, that's what I think it is. I'll see if I can clean it up a little bit so we can um, see a little bit more exactly what we're looking at. Well, look here, it's a little cleaner already. And what I think we're looking at are definitely sheaves from a boat. And these bits here are probably made from lignum vitae, or some kind of different wood than the usual wood, or the wood that's in the middle here.
I like that. I do like that. And look what I've also just pulled out of the mud. There was just the tiniest bit of metal poking out. So I gave it a little tug and out came a hook. Now that is also rather nice. That is a resplendent hook. I see the honker. There they are, look. Now, look what I've seen down here. Now, it looks like it could be a watch strap. Let's see if there's anything on the end of it. Oh, look, there is. There is, you know. Oh, wow. Look at that. working but it's definitely all there let's give it a little rinse find. It would be amazing if it was real, but I suspect that it's probably not real. Okay, further investigation is needed. Look down here. I thought at first this could be a ring, but it isn't. Look, it looks like a, a little lens. The end of something. The lens in it. Some kind of maritime um, instrument, perhaps. Oh, here we go, look. If you don't like pipes, you're not gonna like this segment of the video. It's a whole one. Well, it's not whole. The stem would have been longer. Not long washed out of the mud, I suspect. And a few more tides dashing against these rocks, it would soon break up into pieces. It's funny, isn't it? The people who smoked those pipes years and years ago would never have imagined that some strange lady would be walking along, picking them up centuries later. But I suppose, who knows what people are going to be picking up of ours in centuries time and getting excited about it. Who knows? We will never know, will we? a nice brick isn't it now I've just come across what looks like a lovely piece of copper sheathing here which used to be put onto the hulls of ships from the mid 18th century to protect them from shipworm, barnacles, um, salt uh, and all sorts. So I always take this, I absolutely love it. Um, I'm gonna wash that off. Oh, I can see a hook here. Such a clean foreshore, 
such a clean foreshore this evening. Lovely ship's nail here. Getting some beautiful nails as well. Okay, and as the tide's coming in, I'm not gonna hang around and wash it too thoroughly because I wanna see what else there is. Okay, I will wash that though. Yeah, that's really nice. It's often made of copper, and that's where the saying copper bottomed comes from. Because when the ships were, or the, when the hulls were coated with this, they were reliable and trustworthy. And so when you enter into a deal with someone and somebody says, oh, it's copper, copper bottomed, that's where it comes from. That's a lovely piece of uh, sheathing there. Oh, now look, over here, we've got a slightly more ornate pipe. So a lot later than these previous ones. Now this is a Victorian pipe, probably mid 19th century. And it's a rose and thistle design. There's the thistle. And there's the rose. And it's got that foliate design there up the seam and it has a maker's mark there's a w and what looks like a c and you can see where it's been smoked look it's all charred around the edge and as always i'll keep the mud in there because you never know there may be a little dottle of tobacco at the bottom we really have got some really nice pipe specimens spanning all through the ages. From early 18th to mid 19th. Here we have a very wet, bedraggled little bird. okay little bird you can come home with me There goes the sun. Come back, come back sun. Thank you very much for watching my video. I hope that wherever you are in the world, you're in good spirits and good health and that your weekend or your week is going as it should do, which is really well, I hope. So here I have in front of me a big pile of miscellaneous mudlarking finds, as usual, which featured in today's video. And so let's take a look at them. And let's start with the one which I'm sure you're all wondering about. And it is this rather garish watch here, which of course, and I'm sure most of you will probably have uh, guessed, it is not a real Rolex. As much as I might wish that it was, it isn't. Um, and you can tell by many reasons. There's no um, serial number on the back. It's not working. And if it was a real one, it would still be working. It would be watertight. The paint, um, is kind of bubbling off and so although initially I thought oh maybe it could be real it isn't 
Um, it wasn't working when I picked it up. When I actually got it home and started to wind it, it did start working for a while. Let's see if we can do it again. See if we can get that little second hand going. No, it's not going to play. So anyway, it's not real. So um, who knows why it was thrown over the wall. Maybe somebody was given it as a present and then were very, very disappointed when they realised that it wasn't real. Or maybe it was stolen. Or I don't know, maybe it was an offering. Who knows? But now I've got it here and I'm sure I'll find something to do with it. I'll probably make a little assemblage with it and put it in a frame. Do something arty with it. So that's the watch. The fake Rolex. It was still quite exciting finding it though. Um, for one moment there I thought, oh, a Rolex. Maybe you can help me with this find here. It's a lovely piece of pottery which has on it a little scene. Now it does look like a person feeding a, a griffin or an eagle. I'm not terribly sure what it signifies. Maybe it's a god feeding another god. And I haven't had a great deal of time to look it up, to be honest. So if anybody out there knows what this scene signifies or who these people are, or what this would have been in its entirety, looks like a little cup or a vase, then please let me know. I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Sometimes it's um, more intriguing to find a piece of something, a piece of pottery, because then you have that sort of challenge to try and put it together and work out what it really was, uh, rather than if you find something which is already whole and there's no challenge, there's no mystery, there's no intrigue. So here's a little pottery challenge. I have here in front of me lots of bits of ship. So which bit should we start with? Here is some copper sheathing, lots of holes in it. And this would have been nailed onto the hull of a ship. In the mid 18th century, the Admiralty copper bottomed their fleet for a variety of reasons, but one of them, or most of them rather, are things that would destroy the wood of the ship, like ship rot, ship worm, salt corrosion, and also barnacles. Barnacles could not cling on to this, this copper bottom. And also it used to make the ship a lot more streamlined and go faster through the water. And I've said it before, I think in a previous video, that that is where the saying comes from, uh, something that is copper bottomed being trustworthy and reliable. I do have a few pieces of copper sheathing. I'll soon have enough to copper bottom my own boat because actually I'm getting so many bits of boat here. I'll soon have enough to make my own boat. I've got this, which you saw me extract from the mud, which is part of a wooden block pulley. I've got the wood in the middle here. There would have been wood on either side. And then we've got the sheaves, which I believe are made out of lignum vitae. And we also have the hook to go with it. So there's the hook and um, would have been underneath here with the rope coming down, attaching the hook. So part of an old ship, certainly 19th century, I'd say. They're some of my favourite types of finds, to be honest, these finds, these um, from maritime history. I just absolutely love it. Recently, and I didn't have my camera at the time, unfortunately. Recently, I found a big dead eye here, which would also have been part of a ship's rigging. I've got my little pipe bowl, which features the rose and the thistle. It's quite a common design. I've actually got quite a lot of rose and thistle pipe bowls, but as I was getting them all together to have a look at them, I realized how different many of them are. a pleasure to find these fancy clay pipes. The clay pipe makers back in Victorian times were real 
artists, I think, with the designs that they used to come up with. Um, now, Kathy, as you will have seen, found a beautiful pot, which I had thought was a, a jam pot or a marmalade pot. But when I looked up J.B. Palmer, it's actually a James Barrow Palmer, and he was a salt merchant in 1842 in Lower Thames Street and in Old Kent Road. And actually, when I started to look him up, I came across a court case which was from the Old Bailey back in the 19th century and I will just read you a little bit of it. It's somebody who was accused of stealing salt from him. So James Barrow Palmer who was actually uh, giving a statement says I am a salt merchant and live in Lower Thames Street. The prisoner was a servant of Mr Worthington who contracted to do my work. On the 21st of November, he, and it's Henry Jones, was entrusted with several parcels of salt to take to different customers. And until the night before last, I believed it was one of those parcels that was stolen. But I find that to be a mistake. The salt found upon him was not to be delivered to anyone. It was put into the cart without my knowledge. I only know this from his having it in my cart and having no other property in the cart but what was mine. It is impossible to swear to salt. So all that sounds extremely complicated. And actually, in the end, Henry Jones was found to be innocent or not guilty. Maybe he wasn't innocent, but anyway, he was found not guilty. I also came across a little piece in a newspaper of the 19th century about James Palmer and his um, venture into the production of vinegar as well. So I'll also put that up on the screen for you to have a look at. It's always fun looking up these people on the shards that we find. It sort of brings their stories to life. And so there we are, James Barrow Palmer. And Kathy, well done on that find. Absolutely superb and intact, beautiful pot like that. So yeah, as we said in the video, always check those little bits of pottery poking out of the mud. And I'll put Kathy's Instagram site on here as well, up in the corner. Kathy's actually a Guernsey mudlark from the Channel Islands. And so if you want to have a look and see what they're finding out there in Guernsey, then take a look at Kathy's Instagram site and give it a follow. Last but not least, I want to tell you about the beautiful knife which came out of the mud. And a big thank you to veteran mudlarks Graham Duom and also Simon Moore for identifying it for me. Now, Graham cleaned up the knife and it came out absolutely beautiful, as you'll see from this photograph. And it was also identified by Graham and Simon as being from the late 17th century which is amazing because I thought that it was a lot later than that. So to find something so old and now to have had it cleaned and in such superb condition, it's really very special. I'm going to be doing a video actually with Graham at some point in the not too distant future. And he has found some amazing objects, um, old Tudor keys, knives and spoons, padlocks, full Bellarmine jars, and he's also, as I mentioned briefly when I found that knife, he's also donated this beautiful collection of knives to the Cutler's Hall in London. And so it's going to be very, very exciting to interview Graham about his mudlarking career and about some of his finds. So I think that that is about it. Oh, apart from the little, the little burb, which is here, and who has been through the washing machine, so his little... Little top knot is looking a little bit uh, better than it was when I picked him out of the mud. And he joins the big array of Tideline Art orphans on the orphanage shelf of my studio. And he's very happy because there's lots of other little bedraggled birds and animals up there. So that is it for today. Um, it's been a strange week this week, as you can imagine, with the death of the Queen announced. It's been very sad, a bit of a sombre mood, but at the same time, it's been lovely to see so many people coming together, united in the grief for 
the, the Queen. And I actually went into London with my parents this week and laid some flowers in Green Park, very close to Buckingham Palace. And it was really moving to go round and read the tributes to the Queen and see the cards and the pictures and see all these people together um, thinking about her remarkable life. Because whatever you may think about the, the monarchy, I mean, she did such an amazing job and it's quite a historical moment really because well, being down there, seeing all these people and seeing the flowers and talking to people about her because there's not going to be another monarch for a very long time who has reigned for such a long time. I forget exactly what it is right now, but yeah. Quite, quite a quite a, um, a poignant week. And I am going to travel into London on Monday. I may walk in, I think, um, along the Thames path. I'm going to walk in and go and see if I can see some of the funeral procession and I'll film as much of it as I can and then perhaps I can share that with you in a, uh, an upcoming video. So thank you so much everybody for watching and also for all your comments, your suggestions, your feedback. Thank you so much too for the donations which many of you have made to my Ko-fi account. I really, really appreciate it. And thank you for all being you. That is the most important thing. I wish you an excellent week ahead and I'm very much looking forward to seeing you again very soon. And I'm sending you lots of love from here in London. Thank you. Bye-bye.